Hello friends! It feels like summer. Oh my god, I don't know where you guys live, but here in Iowa it like got very hot very quickly. Um, anyways, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Megan. I am a fitness coach for or I specialize in helping women with chronic joint pain um, implement fitness into their lives safely and effectively to reach their goals and work around limitations. And today I was thinking like, okay, what do I want to make a video about? And I was thinking about it and I was like, oh my God, I haven't made a video about this yet, is working around flare-ups during your fitness journey because a lot of times um, we think, when we flare up that it's all over like we should just give up on our fitness goals like it's not going to happen for us and we tend to let a lot of negativity really take over and that really doesn't have to be the case because first of all when it comes to having a chronic illness we need to realize that sometimes flare-ups just happen like sometimes it's just inevitable we can do everything right but we can still have flare-ups sometimes and just because you have a flare-up does not mean that you are incapable of reaching your goals because you are still totally capable you are still deserving you are still strong enough and you are still worthy enough to reach your fitness goals. I promise you that. I still get flare-ups occasionally and I do not let it stop me anymore. Um, it used to be that that was the case, but I feel like I kind of started off with a really strong mindset around my fitness journey goals um, in the beginning. So this wasn't you know, something that I really really struggled with at first but it is it's hard it's hard guys so i mean if you are somebody who is also in your fitness journey and you're working through flares and you have chronic joint pain or chronic illness like hats off to you you are doing so much like you like people don't realize the self-discipline you have to have in order to work around the pain <laughs> um because i mean like fitness takes a lot of self-discipline in general like without having a chronic illness but then when you have you know your body working against you and you're still prioritizing your health and fitness like that is so much um so i just kind of wanted to get that out there so ways that you can work around your flare-ups the first thing is focus on nutrition so you can still make a lot of progress by just focusing on nutrition like if you can't work out hard if you can't push yourself during your workouts which if you're in a flare-up that's probably the case like simply focusing on your nutrition and staying consistent um, can help you to still make that progress when it comes to weight loss when it comes to gaining muscle mass um, so Keep that in mind that like just focus on the things that you can control in the moment. And one of them is definitely nutrition. Um, also, when it comes to nutrition, obviously we want to do everything we can in order to reduce inflammation, obviously, because you know, when you're in a flare-up, you want to try to minimize it the best that you can and do everything in your power to do so. So we want to really focus on having more anti-inflammatory foods, which means having more of those whole foods and less processed foods, lots of micronutrients, lots of antioxidants, things that work for you, and also focusing on still fueling your body because just because you're in a flare-up does not mean your body does not need food. Um, so we still need to be fueling your bodies. Um, and I know a lot of people actually struggle with having a low appetite when they're in a flare up. And this is, you know, very, very common depending on your body and everything and how you handle more inflammation. So my biggest tip to deal with that is drinking smoothies um, that are really high calorie, high in nutrients. And I mean, you don't really want to rely on smoothies throughout the entire day, but it is very, very, it's a very good way to temporarily like get in those calories, get in enough nutrients um, if eating whole foods is just not going to happen or if it's really hard for you to eat a full meal. Um, that's like a really good backup plan. So 
make sure that you're focusing on nutrition. And then the second thing is going to be stress reduction. So when it comes to having a chronic illness, like even without a flare up, we want to do everything that we can in order to minimize the mental stress. Because I mean, with a chronic illness and autoimmune issues, our body is already under some physical stress, depending on how it's going for each individual. Like obviously everybody's different at different times, but no matter what, like if you have an autoimmune disease, your body's going through it like some level of stress like physical stress all of the time and then if you're adding exercise onto it that is a little bit more physical stress and you don't want too much of that um and you know obviously when you have like really high mental stress your body can react in the same way and release a lot of cortisol and that can lead to a flare-up which i've talked about in another one of my videos i think um however our bodies are very very sensitive to stress so we want to do everything we can in order to ease a little bit of that mental stress especially because being in a flare-up can add to the stress that we're feeling um because you know when you're in a flare-up it's you know dealing with uncertainty you're not really in control of as many things as you'd like to be and it can just add to a lot of anxiety and i know at least for me i deal with anxiety and then when i'm in a flare-up it's you know times 100 so i can definitely relate to that um so some things you can do are like to have a set routine for yourself and it doesn't have to be super rigid but just having like a morning routine a nightly routine, um, adding things that are going to help you to relax, like doing breath work or, you know, like breathing techniques, meditations, um, journaling. If you're feeling like, you know, you have a lot of thoughts coming up, maybe some other things are happening in your life and you want to, like, it just takes a little bit more work in order to reduce that stress. You could do that journaling. Um, so basically whatever is going to help you most to be able to reduce that mental stress as much as possible and then another thing is going to be affirmations so this is going to be such an essential part of getting through your flare-up in your fitness journey because obviously we still want to prioritize our health and fitness and sometimes you know when we're in a flare-up we tend to feel bad about ourselves we tend to feel guilty just really frustrated not good in our bodies so obviously we want to try to minimize that negativity as much as possible and i'm not saying like it's wrong to feel angry or frustrated or sad or upset when you're in a flare-up. You should be feeling all of those things, but we want to increase that self-love as much as possible because you should be loving yourself all the time, especially when your body and your like you yourself, you need it the most, um, which is, you know, during a really rough time, such as a flare-up, like you really do need to love yourself during those times. So affirmations are such a key to this so just choosing affirmations that really resonate with you um things that maybe you feel like you have a lot of limiting beliefs behind or like surrounding and choosing those things to say to yourself because you need to hear it the most and knowing that they are absolutely true no matter how you're feeling um, so things like, I am still worthy of reaching my goals, um, I am safe, I am healthy, like just putting those uh, affirmations out there and really truly believing them. And then exercise. So when it comes to exercise, it again, it like really depends on the person. Like when it comes to me being a fitness coach with clients who have flare-ups, it really really depends on the individual like sometimes I recommend to deload your workouts which means to reduce the volume of your workouts um, so that could mean doing less sets less reps less weight or resistance you know a combination of all of those things um so that's something that you could do because maybe you can still you know get in a little bit of your workouts like still prioritize the movement part but you just don't you know obviously you don't want to push it um so that's something you could do another thing is just um 
focusing on very light exercise or movement such as walking or cycling um, at a, like a slower to moderate pace just to prioritize that joint movement not really to push yourself or anything like that um, and then stretching is a really good one stretching or yoga so if you're somebody who you know finds that yoga is super helpful when you're in a flare-up and you're having a lot of joint pain that's definitely something to implement when you're in a flare-up or just like light stretching at, at the minimum because you obviously want to reduce as much stiffness as possible um, because if you're going to be a little bit more sedentary you don't want your joints to lock up or you know you want to maintain that range of motion and your strength as much as you can and then realizing that it is part of the journey all setbacks are part of your fitness journey it is okay you are going to overcome these setbacks you're going to overcome these flare-ups like it is just part of it and like with chronic illness we have to realize that flare-ups are setbacks and they are just going to be part of our journey and that's why fitness is such a long-term thing like you shouldn't wait until you have zero flare-ups like for a whole year or something like that in order to start your fitness journey you can start your fitness journey now um but obviously you know start where you're at don't push it right away and listen to your body gradually progress as much as you're able to work around your pain and limitations that's another reason why it's super helpful to have a coach or somebody to really help guide you through that because not a lot of people really understand that you can start your fitness journey right now um and you don't have to be completely 100 percent okay with your symptoms like no no symptoms at all in order to start it like you can implement fitness as much as you can right now um in different ways obviously so just want to throw that out there. Um, this is something I do in my program with my clients is learning how to work around these flare ups, learning how to still make progress while working around flares. And honestly, it's not even about just, you know, still making that progress and feeling better, um, maybe even like minimizing the symptoms of your flare ups a little bit more. Um, but it's also about just learning how to deal with flare ups in the long term, like throughout the years to come. Um, so I wanna throw that out there because I know that a lot of times when we flare up, we think it's all over and we just want to give up. And I am here to tell you, you do not have to give up. You can still prioritize your health and fitness in different ways. You can still make progress in different ways. It is going to be okay. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and yeah, so hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully this came to you at the right time. Let me know if you have any questions. Comment below if there's anything that you want to make or anything that you want me to make a video about. Um, and if you're interested in learning how to work around your pain and limitations, how to work around flare ups in order to still reach your goals, apply for one on one coaching down below in the description and don't forget to like and subscribe thank you so much for watching bye